this is great. Thank wow. you for coming. This is so nice. I didn't know it would be that this many people. Yeah, well, they've been um, sitting here um, anxiously waiting. We've been listening to some of your music. <laughs> oh, you have? A couple little, well, videos earlier, but yeah, oh so we've been, we've been um, primed and prepped. Um, so I understand that you're promoting a new record, is that right? Yeah. Released yesterday? Released, it came out yesterday. It's called Some Lessons Learned, and it's about, um, it's about. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, like, what, what, what's one of the lessons that you've learned? Um, <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> How long album, do we have? The album. Um, I don't know. But aside I, from the album, what, what would you think? I mean, to me, I, I mean, you guys are all going to understand this. Thing is, don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, I guess you guys have to sweat the small stuff. <laughs> so I don't have to. Um, but that's a big lesson, you know. You can you can only do and worry about so much. That's definitely a good point. We definitely deal with a lot of, um, yeah. I mean, I guess being overwhelmed and, uh, uh, like, and just kind of sorting it. Do what you can. Do your best, and you know, have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good. Have coke, of course. Yeah. Um, so TV, Broadway, music, um, almost everything under the sun. I, I was a stage manager in theater, so they have the, the triple threat. Obviously, and I was trying to come up with a term for someone who does more than three things. <laughs> you know, like uh, you were in... Type A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess we have some uh, uh, populated questions from people here. Uh, and also people on VC and other offices watching. Um, and we've, it's a Google Thank moderator God. page. They vote the most important ones. And uh, so we can start with one of those. <laughs> and we'll take some live questions here. We have some CDs we're going to give away to people to ask oh some live questions. God. And we'll oh, kind of go from great. there. I'm very um, happy. Oh, I should get the live. I should get the live. I'm trying to be very high tech. I got what a tablet. What is that? This is uh, one of our, this is a tablet. You probably invented it. Y'all probably invented wish it. I <laughs> yeah, I wish I had the patent on it. That'd be great. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so one of the uh, top questions was, um, I'm sure you get this a lot, I adored Pushing Daisies, and it was the saddest when it was canceled. Are there any plans to work on a sequel project, movie, TV special, et cetera? Uh, is, if there are, would you appear as Olive again? I would have to be dumb not to. I mean, Brian Fuller, I always say, like, does your head hurt from the information that is in your head? Much like I would say to any of y'all, but, I mean, he's so smart. He created this world. I knew when I read the pilot that it was going to be special. Um, and I knew where Olive could go. And um, there's talk of doing a movie. So maybe if we all write in how much we want him to, to do it. They, I know he's writing and has been doing um, the comic for Marvel Comics. Um, and I like the way I look in the cartoon version. <laughs> I certainly sound like a cartoon, so it's like perfect. <laughs> but um, I, I would love to play Olive Snick. That's um, one of my biggest, not regrets, but like the itch that I can't scratch is the ending to that show, um, the, the closure. And, and obviously, I don't know what makes a hit because I thought it was the most genius thing I'd ever seen. And not just because I was in it. I just loved it. It was great. And I the know. cast. Yeah. Lee Pace, cast, Anna style. Bill, Swoozy, Ellen, Chai. So good. So good. Um, I was catching up on a couple of episodes from the from the second half of the second season and I forgot how, did you, how much did I Did you see it. the pig that I worked with? Pigby? Or Digby the dog? The Digby, yes. I had to work with all animals and children. That is so not fair. Oh, my dog today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish you would have. I love your, well, I love dogs. What kind do you have? <laughs> <laughs> What's it's definitely not um, um, interviewing me. Oh, but who no, cares? She's, she's, cares? A, she's a, uh, <laughs> a Welsh corgi. Um, <gasps> Isn't that what the queen has? Um, probably. <laughs> They're so cute. Did you sing for the queen. Yes, I do. Okay, because I was watching The View yesterday, or <laughs> I wasn't. Wa I actually watched it this. I actually watched it this morning. Say it online. loud. Say it proud. Well, I said, yeah, I was like, Whoopi Goldberg is good at this, and I'm not because I've always been behind the scenes. So I'm like, I'm gonna go steal her questions, and that was one of the questions. You I was are steal. so cute. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, this is rough. This is hard. This is definitely tough. Where right, are I'm gonna go back from? to the door question. Where are you from? I'm originally from North Carolina. Oh, you are the basketball. No, uh, well, it was basketball. I never, I never played. Do they have basketball. a professional football team? Uh, football, mm -hmm. they do now. I think it's the Panthers in Charlotte. Never heard of them. Yeah, they weren't around when I was when I was growing up. But um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to the Dory because that's easy. You're so cute. Are you single? Uh, <laughs> 
making this any easier. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, this is this is a uh, this is a good one. I can dream, can't I? <laughs> it's the end of my day. I'm letting it loose for you guys. Glad. <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee. Uh, your co-star on uh, Pushing Days is also named Lee. Also, Lee Pace, Lee Pace, who I love, who is about seven feet tall. Um, I just, I'm glad you brought him up. I want to give a shout out to him and his family. They've just recently lost their farm in Texas from the fires. So, um, you know, he's, I'm sure, dealing with that. I just love him. I think he's an amazing actor. More than anything, though, I think he's a great person. I just love him. He, I would be like, we're running behind. I've been here 14 hours again. He's like, Buddha. Zen, <laughs> calm. He never. He was just that person, <laughs> and I needed it. So it was great. <laughs> another one of the top uh, voted questions was: uh, since you do perform in both Broadway and TV shows, what are the main differences? Uh, main uh, differences for you as an actor and a singer? Well, you know, when when you're doing a Broadway show, um, you get to hide hide behind or in a character, which I love. Um, it's hard to just be. I love that noise. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You need to do your job too, sir. Um, I get to hide in a character, and I love that because um, um, it's an opportunity to to bring a, an, a, an original piece of work or um, a revival. You know, uh, playing to the back of the house is the challenge. Eight times a week, Broadway is not for wimps. It's not for wimps. But when you're doing TV and film, you know, you're perf television, you're performing for a, an audience this big, or depending what size of TV you have. Y'all probably have like that. Well, see, there it is. That's the size of TV you have. So, you know, it's a smaller thing. So um, you might have to dial it in a little bit. It might be feel a little bit more intimate to me. But really, to me, if I'm on a concert stage in front of an orchestra, or if I'm at a dive bar singing, or if I'm... I'm um, I'm doing a film. If I'm staying true to myself and the character, even if the person is, I'm just presenting myself um, in front of people, then uh, I just want to always be true to that. So it kind of, I kind of feel like I can't miss. I mean, I might not be everyone's favorite, but I, if I'm true, then whether it's film, TV, uh, theater, or concert, it, it's a, it doesn't really matter. To me, it's all the same. It's an extension of me. And it's, it's that form of communication. It's all right. We'll reel that my in. World. I want y'all to invent a way I could have a microphone implanted in Great my idea. body. <laughs> yeah. And you could get the patent on that. <laughs> okay. Engineers together, we'll start working Come on, on that. guys. Yeah, yeah, implants into head. There's a, that, that's, that's a huge market opportunity. Right? For a lot of, I, would buy, I would buy that, yeah. sucker. If I could not type anymore, that would be awesome. Wait, I'm, do you guys, are your fingers tired? Do your arms get sore? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet, I bet. Um, <laughs> do, uh, do, uh, um, are you going to come back to Broadway anytime soon? Are there any plans uh, for any shows coming up? Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to. Thank you. you. I really want to, um, well, I'm going to revive a show called On the 20th Century. It hasn't been done in 30 years. The, the woman that created the role, Lily Garland, it was... Um, Madeline Kahn, who my dog is named after. She's one of my favorite actresses and singers that ever lived. Thank you. I love her, too. She's my favorite. Um, so I'll, I'll look forward to that because it's operatic in nature, but it's co a comedy. And a, that's what happens when you have a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and there, my, my record sales just went down. Anyway, that's the most balls I've ever had in my, my voice, right there. There you go, yeah. Anyway, um... Uh, wow, my mom is so proud right now. <laughs> but I, I, I also am um, working on a, a show that, that I will do too. The, the, um, the first thing will be on the 20th century, and then the second is a, the sort of life uh, story of Tammy Faye Baker. I don't know if um, any of you remember her, but she was a, a really well-known um, televangelist's wife, and she was on television as well um, as a, a very unique uh, funny, interesting woman and character. So, uh, Henry Krieger, who who composed Dream Girls, is composing that. We did our first reading not long ago. It's amazing music. But I look forward to coming back to Broadway anytime they'll have me. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, yeah, we have a live question. I want to hear your thoughts briefly on um, 
uh, Steel Pier as well, actually, because I did the tour uh, after it left Broadway what? briefly did in 2001. Oh, did you have a part? Don't tell me who. No, I was a stage man. I never performed a day in my life. This is actually the fourth time I've ever been in front of a camera. What? <laughs> yeah. You should always be uh, in front of a camera. No, <laughs> <laughs> no thank you. I'll pass. I'll pass. Okay, yeah, Steel Pier. Uh, yeah. So anyway, it. so Dave. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks Can you please tell us about your most embarrassing moment on stage? Just happened. <laughs> that burp. Um, let's see. There was a, a show I did um, uh, in uh, Gu- at the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis um, called A Babes in Arms, and it was going to come to Broadway, but it ultimately didn't get there. But um, I had a um, a job of tap dancing down a big stairway stair thing of keys piano keys and sing and dance this song be a part of this number called keys to heaven and i had a big big time quick change right before the number where i had to change my wig in like 14 seconds and i i had just did my own wig every night did my own night two pins because then i would change again and put my normal wig back on and um i was sort of dressed like a carmen miranda type character and i remember doing the big and I felt like something might have come off my hair or something. I was like, oh, well, keys to heaven. And I'm looking out, and there's like people going, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I see. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized my wig's on the floor. <laughs> Bald cap, microphone, just, just dancing away, you know. Um, I finished the number completely bald and uh, <laughs> then put the wig back on my head when it was over. It was embarrassing. And then three weeks later, I'm doing the same show and I, act two, would enter in, you know, a, like a bomb, this thing that comes out of the audience. And I'm waiting at intermission. And I, I can sometimes hear the people talk before I enter because it's intermission. And I hear, just honest to goodness, I hear like three weeks later. And then her wig fell off and she kept dancing. I was like, you're talking about me. Anyway, it was like a PS to the most horrifying moment. But what do you mean? Thank you. Do you want a CD? <gasps> oh, good. I hope you like it. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Um, I love the Dave Matthews band, too. Aren't they amazing? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jen. Um, thank you for coming. My husband actually met you, gosh, after you did Charlie Brown, you went to see the first regional production of Charlie Brown after you closed, and you sat down with the cast, and my husband was Charlie Brown and got his equity what? I remember it. In that I remember show. The sh- I remember that. So I'm and here for him and for me. Well, so. you tell him hi, and he I was will. great. And I'll say, you know, Bob, Kristen said hi. Yes, tell him hi, and that that's the only production I've ever seen. Oh, well, he'll, he'll be he'll be thrilled. Cool. First of all, we um, love Glee at my house, and thank you for being in it. And a couple years ago, we took my mother in law to the concert as a surprise at Radio City. You weren't there, but they were playing the soundtrack, and a ten year old behind me said, "Oh my God, I love this song so much!" And it was you singing um, "One Less Bell to Answer." Are you kidding? And what struck me in two thousand and nine when that happened was a ten year old was thrilled to hear you sing Burt Bacharach. And so I wanted to ask you, I, it's amazing to me. It but, is um, amazing to me, too. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious that he would know. You know, that well, that would mean you something. you brought that music back. So I wondered, who would you like the current generation of tweens to hear, either through Glee or what music could we bring back that they need to hear? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I, I too, love the fact that Glee has brought... You know, in one episode, in my the first episode, I did um, I did a, a, a Kenner Neb, maybe this time from from Cabaret. I did a Carrie Underwood song called Last Name, and I did a '70s um, rock. Uh, Heart is the group. I did Alone, and I mean Ryan Murphy, like those three songs, completely different. He's done such a good job at bringing all different kinds of music to this show, which is why it struck such a chord and why it makes me happy that a nine-year-old kid goes, I love this song. Um, I would love to see, you know, a resurgence of the, of the 30s. I mean, I, I, you know, 30s and 40s music, that was actually my first um, record I ever made was that kind of music, Gershwin, Rodgers and Hart. Um, you know, uh, we... we we have wonderful composers today, but there is a, a sense of innocence at time that we can revisit. That I, and, and to make it current again would be amazing. But when I think of even, you know, Cole Porter, 
Oh gosh, there, there's too many to mention. That's probably my fav favorite era. So um, I would love to see that c come back more. Uh, that's, that's a good question. The um, so you also won a Tony for Good Man Charlie Brown. So I gotta gotta put that in there. <laughs> Thank and you. Um, uh, I guess kind of a follow up question for on the on the Glee side of things. Were you ever in show choir? Did you, like how did you get your start? Was well, my start was in church because I grew up in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and our only outlet of performance was either that or cheerleading, which I did because I was like, I, I can perform. But I faked the yelling. Huh? I was a flyer, which is why I, I smashed my cooter. I know people have heard this. I broke my coccyx because I was on the top and somebody got tired and let me down. I was in the splits and I'm like, with my coccyx and I call it the cooter smash. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, but what's funny thing about being a cheerleader was I faked the yelling because I didn't want to hurt my voice. I'd be like, <laughs> I did, and they would. This one girl who were remaining was like, "You're faking it." I was like, "I know I am," but um, we didn't have show choir. But what we did have, <laughs> which is maybe even, I mean, it's as nerdy as you can get. We had madrigals, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, <laughs> yes. And of course, I was the leader of the madrigals. I loved madrigals. Like you have to audition, and of course, it was like me auditioning, nobody else. Um, but. That holds a special uh, place in my heart. I was a big fan of the King Singers, this madrigal group, and um, yeah, so I was in madrigals. I did the, qu the, the choir concerts. I did the drama club, and I was a silent cheerleader, and um, <laughs> and I sang at rodeos. I could, I sang at anything I could because that was the only outlet I had. Oh, he's certainly had a, a great career um, ever since then. Um, and I also heard that uh, ABC picked up a show called Good Christian Bells that's coming yeah. out as well. Yeah, Good Christian Bells. And I, I caught a little tidbit, on, tidbit online, and I know you're not supposed to believe everything you read or see online, although someone did mention to me that you said you got to sing from your cooter now that we're on the subject. Um, is that true? And how does that work? Well, uh, I was like, I'm asking too many questions. <laughs> um, I can tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, so I, I, but I heard there was a, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go to a completely different subject. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, ABC show had a different name on the pilot. Is that true? Yeah, Good Christian Rhymes with Witches. Oh. Um, but it was based on a book that Kim Gatlin wrote out of um, Dallas, a wonderful writer, very funny. And it was basically her experience about getting divorced and moving back from, from a uh, big city to, na to, uh, Dallas and what she went through with the girls that she grew up with and how they accepted her and it's really less about religion and more about relationships which is very fun um, uh, it's funny um, I would never do anything that made fun of anyone's religion so uh, there's a difference in making fun of and having fun with and I think that's what we do so well and Bobby Harling who wrote Still Magnolias certainly knows how to write women Wrote it. We have Annie Potts, Jennifer Aspen, Marisol Nichols, Leslie Bibb, and Miriam Shore. Um, some of you may know from Hedwig here in New York. And um, I'm, I must say, I'm really proud of it. Um, we're in the middle of shooting right now, so uh, um, I've taken just one week off to to talk about my record, and and I'll go on tour when when we wrap. But we're doing ten episodes, and we'll get our air date soon. So exciting! That's exciting. I don't see how you do it all. First of all. Um, I have no life. I, yeah, I had a question. It's like, what do you do with your free time? I'm like, scratch that off. Here's what I do. <laughs> Hillbilly hand vision. Dance moms. Real Housewives of New Jersey. I mean, it's mindless because sometimes I just need to turn off my brain. You guys understand this. You just need to turn off your brain sometimes. So what better way than reality TV? It certainly seems to do the trick. Um, <laughs> no kidding. Uh, uh, so you, well, I guess I'm going to go to another live question. Another CD here. Uh, so clearly so much of your art has to do with music and singing, right? I mean, you know, all of your Broadway and your record and everything. And then you did this very sort of straight role, comedic, but on a drama in the West Wing, right? So yeah. what, was, what was it like doing that? What made you decide you wanted to do that? Um, thank you for asking that question. I, I loved the West Wing, but um, I had been offered the show... Um, and then I had been offered Wicked, so I had to decide which one I was going to do. And I took Wicked. Um, and then... Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I think it was, might have been the right decision. So, um, <laughs> and, then, um, and then Aaron Sorkin, the creator of West Wing, had, had left the show. And John Wells took over, and another amazing showrunner and writer and creator in his own right. And he'd asked me to come on as Annabeth Schott. 
And uh, Annabeth was the deputy press secretary, getting everybody uh, first first in line, uh, Richard Schiff's character, Toby, um, in, in line to become uh, press secretary when Allison Janney's character stepped into a new part. And um, I was really nervous because I'm not really political. Like, I should never talk politics because I would I would live, my foot would just be hanging out of my mouth. Um, I, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about different countries and how they did things. And um, Martin Sheen is, God, he, he taught me a lot. I mean, everybody on that show was so knowledgeable in this particular area. And I can see why, because you kind of have to get there because you're talking about it so much. I mean, I would get these monologues about Uzbekistan this long. I'd be like, is that by pro is it Prada and use is that a leather? <laughs> anyway, but I learned. My point is, I learned so much, and I um, I grew a lot as an artist. Um, precisely why I took the part is what what you said. I wanted to do something in a world that people might might not put me in, and and it worked out. It was really I was supposed to do three episodes, and I did two seasons. So I loved it. I loved it. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Here's your CD. So we um, also oh. like there's there's two there's two um, nice uh, uh, questions. We're gonna save the last CD for you, young lady. But one second, and we'll come back to you. Um, there's two questions on the Dory that are um, uh, kind of related. One of them is is uh, was there ever a point in your career where you almost or you felt like you almost gave up or you were just having a tough time? And the other related question is, um, what advice would you give to aspiring actors? Well, it, it is related. For artists, I guess. Anything. It is related. The first, I'm going to answer the second half first, I guess. And I, I've heard, I've said this many times. People have heard me answer this question, and I, I, I never have to think about it because I know what the answer is. Um, it, it, this life career is so rewarding. But if you can see yourself doing anything else and being happy, then you should do it because this this can be hard. Um, there's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of challenge, and you are selling yourself. It's very hard not to take things personally. No matter what level you are, you get constant rejection. doesn't matter. I was sitting in an audition many years ago, and a very famous Academy Award winner was sitting next to me, and she was auditioning for the mother part, and I said, why are you here? And she said, I still you have an Academy. I worship you. And she goes, I'm here to audition. Just because you get an award doesn't mean it's over. It means, in a way, it's... It's more risk involved, you know, microscope is really there. So um, that being said, if you can't see yourself doing anything else and being happy, then you should go for it because it is the greatest gift to be able to do what you love. And I know because I, I get to do what I love. And um, not everybody gets to, can say that. And uh, I'm very lucky and it has been hard there have been times where I've been low I get depressed there's a conception about me that I'm happy all the time that I wake up I'm gonna get ready now I'm gonna put on my shoes um, you know they say that com comedians are actually very tortured people <laughs> comedy comes through drama it's just sped up um, and I can understand that, but am I basically a happy person? Yes. Um, I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a healthy family. Um, I have an awesome pet that I love so much. Um, I have great friends. My mom and dad love me and gave me the gift of, um, self-esteem and I love I love it, and, and it, but it is hard. It's hard to live by. It yeah. is right. Yes, yeah, so someone some, someone gave me similar advice. for like, don't write a song unless you have to. Kind oh, of like you have to great. have that passion behind it, and it's um. Yeah, you do. And if you have something to say, say it. You know. Yeah. Are you want to go for another live question? Do you have any advice for people um, looking into getting to, into theater? For. Well, I, I would definitely say, you know, um, when I was 19, before, uh, before I went to OCU, I went to Oklahoma City University for um, music. 
my father, I, I had auditioned for Opryland for the summer. Uh, uh, I love Opryland. It's now a mall, which I love malls, but I'm really mad at that mall because it <laughs> took the best music place in the world to me. Um, I auditioned, got in a show called Way Out West, and then I had to go back to school. And uh, my dad said, you're going to go back to school. I said, no, I'm going to, I'm actually going to stay in Nashville. I'm going to work at in Opryland for the rest of my life. And he said, no, you're going to go. I said, no, that's sweet of you. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stay here. He's like, I'm coming to get you now. And take me back. And though I went kicking and screaming, I am so thankful that I had my education, that I had a higher education. It gave me an opportunity to hone my craft, which I still work on. It gave me an opportunity to experience a little bit of life on my own with under, without the roof of uh, being under the roof of my parents. It gave me opportunities to screw up and f see what that feels like by myself. It gave me opportunities to win and see what that felt like. And it, so I grew up a lot. Um, so I would say New York and LA and Nashville and all these other awesome places to work and perform are always going to be there. So you have your whole life. So as much training, because there's so many talented people out there. So it just gives you an edge up if you have the skill to back the craft. So I would say educate, learn, take class, whatever that means for you. That, that's the best advice I can give. And enjoy it. Have fun. You're welcome. I hope you like my re record. <laughs> Um, so you're an, you're an avid Twitter user. I love Twitter. Yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> I love it. I was gonna ask like, what's your favorite way to connect with your fans? But I think the, the answer to that is is Twitter. I think you've uh, got seven thousand tweets, four hundred thousand followers along those lines, <laughs> well, something like that's that. So <laughs> crazy. I want to think about it. I like to be able to say first. I thought I don't understand the concept of Twitter. Ashton, are you kidding me? I'm having a hamburger now. Now I'm going to the mall. That's so dumb. Yeah. Now I'm like, I, this man at the airport's picking his toenails. I mean, I right. think it's so, I love Twitter. Um, I love hearing, as much, as much as the followers of me like to hear from me, I like to hear from them. Like the other day, this woman was like, I bit my tongue, and who knew that the next day a chunk would be missing and it hurt so bad. And I was like, I am so sorry, that has to suck. I like to hear... <laughs> I would like to hear the reg, you know, just regular, because I'm pretty much down to earth. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of what you see is what you get. So, um, anyway, that's what, I love it. I love it. And you ever considered using Google Plus? <laughs> so it's kind of like when Twitter. you ask me like that. Yeah. Well, it's. I think they can have. They can. Yeah. I think there's software where you can send tweets and really? Facebook stuff and well, Google Plus, and we'll 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 definitely hook you up. It's All very right. similar, but you can. Um, you don't have to constrain yourself to however many characters it is. You uh, can. You can. Uh, this has been my problem. Mm. <laughs> solved. Solved. Right here. I. I know. We could. We sure could. could. That might be. That might be. No, I didn't mean to hear. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oof. Later, oh, later. In private. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know I'm just kidding, you crap. Um, how much time do we have? Do we have much time left? Is anyone going to cut me off? No? Keep going? All right. All right, I'm out of CDs. You... I know you wanted one beforehand. Actually, I'll give you mine. Is that no, my desk? No, I have one in later. my purse. Oh, okay. well, then I want the one from your purse. Done. Extra special. Done. So I loved when you sang for good for Oprah um, for her last show as her Moorhead graduate surrounded her. Thank and you. I was wondering, what did you envision a moment like that for yourself? What would that moment be? Who has changed you for good? Oh my God, I love this question. Nobody has ever asked me that. I would think, I actually thought she's probably been asked this over and over again. Like, you mean if I, well, I would never be famous enough to be or good enough to be Oprah, but it's like I, my, that moment. Um, oh man, I, I love this question. I, I think, um, obviously, we all look for ways to give back. And I have, I do have a charity. Because um, 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 <laughs> I know people are, are going, oh, of course. But I do. I love animals. And I have a charity called Maddie's Corner. My dog, Madeline Kahn, Chenoweth, um, she started a charity. She whispered through her paw one night, start this charity under my name. But it basically is helps um, animals get placed into the right home. 
for them because a lot of times we hear about dogs that get you know and into a, a, a very kid friendly and they're, they're not used to kids so it, it helps facilitate that and sometimes people who need animals so it's animals helping people helping animals is the theme so in my perfect world and we're a long way from this is that every displaced dog or cat or bird or snake or whatever <laughs> would be in their right home um, like, I can imagine if someone was seeing for good and I was an old lady and, like, all these, like, dogs and cats came down and, and you know, with their owners, I would, I would just die. I just love animals. I just love them. And, you know, I love children, too. Those who can't speak for themselves. Just, it kills me. I cannot, if I see a St. Jude commercial, I'm like, here's $70,000. I won't be able to eat, but I don't care. I just can't. If someone's been abused or hurt and can't help themselves, it's just, I can't. I know everybody's the same. It's not like I'm special in this belief. But um, that would be my moment. And thank you for asking me that. That was an incredible moment for her to see what she has done. Oh. She did the ugly cry. She did. I was just talking to, I did the Gail King radio show today, and she was saying, that that was a very special moment because it forced Oprah, who's not always, you know, she, we always see her giving, but receiving is hard for her. So she had to receive that. And she said, I was so glad she was able to just let loose and see what she had done. I mean, she put all these men through college. I mean, what? Talk about making your mark on this world. It's great. Thank you. We have, um, uh, um, I, so I guess, kind of coming back to, to Nashville, I mean, you were in, uh, you know, film and so you're in New York, um, LA. Um, and so I guess you kind of came back to Nashville. I mean, was it something that you're kind of doing uh, all along? Um, I spent a little time in Murphy's, I went to school in Murfreesboro actually. Oh, you so did? Where? I did. Uh, Middle Tennessee State actually. And MSTU, right? Yeah. And I was like, what am I doing here after a while? <laughs> but after you mentioned like Nashville, um, Maybe but they have such food. good food. There is good food. There is good food there. I, right. know. Right. I so know. So, how was that for you? Was it was it was it a great experience? Did you feel like it was kind of returning to something familiar? Or, I know? mean, I grew up in a southern state, and I grew up singing and hearing that kinds of music. You know, a lot of people um, on Broadway grew up listening to cast albums and going to Broadway shows or the tours. And we didn't have that in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. We had cast albums. And I did, like, Les Mis and the, the main ones. But I had never heard of, like, certain shows. So I I listened to country music and gospel music. That's That was my um, whole thing. So when I went to do Opryland, I fell in love with Nashville. And I always said one day I would be back. And um, I'm 20 years later. Um, back in Nashville recording this record and um, someone asked me the other day, why country? Why now? And <laughs> I, I understood the question because that's not what I'm known for. But since I was this big, which I'm now only this big, but <laughs> this big, I wanted to make an album like this. So I, I'm thrilled to put um, this country pop feel into um, the world and let people know how I grew up singing and I co-wrote a couple of songs so I'm putting myself out there as a songwriter too which is very scary um, and it's scary to release an album like this because you don't know if it'll be accepted you know but I know that the product I'm so proud of the things I got to say which is you get to do that when you're when you get to make a record it's what, about what you have to say so um, Bob Ezrin who did Pink Floyd's The Wall and Alice Cooper, you name it. He was my producer, and I had great songwriters, the best musicians in Nashville, and I just, I loved my time there. My jeans were so tight when I left, because I was like, meet and three. They have this thing, we have it in Oklahoma too, like ribs or brisket, and then you get three sides, and you can pick like, you know, macaroni and cheese, a, a fried okra. I mean, it was a smorgasbord. It was a festival of eating every day. I loved it so much. Um, yeah, I love Nashville. <laughs> the food, the food always comes back to Google. We have really pretty good food here in lunch, and so most people are like, "What's the best thing about Google?" It's, it's the food. It's the well, food. your your building is unbelievable. Yes, yes. How many people work here? Close to two thousand, I think. Three? Are you no way. <laughs> really? 
So, yeah, so they it I used hope to you guys be the, like each other. <laughs> <laughs> There's also enough room now where we don't have to like see it's, one another. You can you tell it's a it's to. a beautiful space. It's great. Well, thank you so much for coming. I think we're out of time. Um, let everyone uh, please give it up for uh, Kristen Chenoweth. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys.